when I was little and adults would ask me the ever so creative question. What do you want to be when you grow up? I'd respond, president, laughing at my five-year-old ambition, they'd always ask me, are you going to be the first female president? And oh, I'd emphatically nod my head yes, I was going to be the first female president. Fast forward to now, with over 10 years of political knowledge and a harsh reality check, my ambitions have drastically changed. I now recognize that my best shot at a career in politics is becoming Mitch McConnell's third wife. Because from what I see as we approach the 2020 election, America just isn't ready for a president like me. Quite frankly, America isn't ready for any anything less than a saltine cracker in a Jimmy Buffett shirt who still lives off a trust fund. I mean, take a look at the two front runners we have right now. We've got President Tiny Hands and Creepy Uncle Joe, who is running solely on electability, with political polarization deeper than ever. The Democrats are scrambling to find anyone who can beat Trump. And... Electability is becoming a candidate's greatest asset. In fact, NBC describes the term as the most important, least understood word of 2020. So today, let's first take a poll on the term electability. Next, nominate electability for the 2020 election before finally rallying up some surprising implications. Last year in my American history class, I had to memorize the list of the 44 presidents. And it wasn't hard because of how many there were. It was hard because they were all the same. The simplest aspect of electability is physical appearance. According to POTUS.com, what generally makes a physically electable candidate is an attractive 5'11 height, a lean 180 pounds, and with the exception of 50% of Barack Obama, white. I mean, we love a pretty president. Take in case, the 1960 election between John F. Kennedy and Richard Nixon, which showcased the first ever nationally televised presidential debates. Millions of Americans watched a sickly, sweaty Nixon, barely recovering from the flu, Debate a young JFK, vibrant from the stage makeup that Nixon refused to wear. According to History.com, over 50% of voters were influenced to vote for JFK because of the televised debates. Interestingly, voters who instead opted to listen to the debates over the radio perceived Nixon to be the stronger candidate with the stronger policies. So... This particular election shows us that a huge part of electability, especially in the age of media, is tied to physical appearance. Although, in context of the 2020 election, electability has become a whole new monster. It really seems as if Democrats have taken the term electability and just run with it with over 20 different candidates at the start of this campaign trail. And here I was, thinking that Democrats only ran from unity and sexual assault allegations against their own party. The New York Times offers several theories of electability pushed out by the Democrats in the past few months. One, the political revolution theory. Candidates like Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren claim electability by strengthening the far left to counterattack Trump's unwavering far right. Two, the Obama coalition theory. Candidates like Andrew Yang and Cory Booker demonstrate electability by re-energizing minority communities that voted for Obama, but not for Hillary Clinton. However, as literally all of these candidates have dropped out, the first two theories pale in comparison to three. The Trump voters theory, which focuses on winning swing voters, primarily working class white voters. Candidates like Amy Klobuchar and frontrunner Joe Biden have made this theory an integral part of their campaign. And these theories 
are just to name a few. What's frustrating about electability is that there is just no one set way to determine what it is and what it isn't. In fact, NBC tells us that electability is unlikely to determine the president, even if voters and party actors claim to care about it. Because, according to 538, we attribute too much of political success to one candidate and their campaign, often overlooking factors such as party control or the state of the economy. When we look back at 2008, we remember how Obama made history as the first black candidate to win with a brilliant campaign that inspired millions. However, we sometimes fail to acknowledge that the Republican Party was trying to win its third consecutive term. And that the stock market had crashed just a few weeks prior to the election. Ultimately, electability is not a reliable tool to base the powerful privilege of a vote on. However, on a slightly more hopeful note, electability creates this weird political paradox that makes candidates who might be less electable due to a minority status actually more effective once in government. Vox tells us that on average, female congressional legislators had 2.6 of her bills passed, compared to men who had only 1.3 of his bills passed. Political scientists at the University of Chicago have coined this the Jackie Robinson effect. I like how baseball player Jackie Robinson simply needed to be a better player in order to overcome the prejudices of coaches and fans. Only the most talented and hardest working candidates can win election. And while it is unfortunate that electability does create unfair advantages to politicians with financial or social privileges, it is amazing seeing a diverse slate of candidates overcoming adversity and breaking barriers. However, the Jackie Robinson effect stays local, rarely translating to the national level. You see, as of right now, there is a huge difference between who Democrats are supporting versus who they actually want. The Magic Wand Poll, conducted by the research firm Avalanche, asked Democrats to imagine that they were given a magic wand, and with it could make any candidate president. Poof! 28% voted for Elizabeth Warren, with 19% for Joe Biden and Bernie Sanders, respectively. Without the magic wand, however, The numbers changed drastically. MIT's Department of Political Science calls this strategic discrimination, in which an individual voter discriminates against a candidate out of the fear or the concern that other voters might object to that candidate. In regards to the Magic Wand poll, strategic discrimination takes place when Democrats who want to support Warren instead throw their support to Biden either fearing or assuming that the rest of the country wouldn't want to vote for a woman, much less a Native American woman. <laughs> Simply put, when we write someone off as unelectable, we make it impossible for that person to even have a shot at election. Today, we dove into the history, the application, and some new ideas of electability. Now, while it may seem like a helpful tool in deciding who to vote for, it is a dangerous and unpredictable weapon. It is my sincerest hope that within the next few years, we prioritize electability a little bit less. And instead, focus on the political values that we live by. Because... I'm begging you, we need the first female president soon. I can't settle for Mitch McConnell. The girl's got her own presidential dreams to chase. <laughs>